In this video, I'm going to share with you a technique that I haven't really seen explained or demonstrated very often, and that's wet on wet painting with gouache. The reason that you want to be able to master this skill if you're a gouache painter is because it opens up a lot of possibilities in terms of edge control. So when you're working with gouache, when the paint is still wet and the paper is still wet, what happens is that you get all these soft edges and, and transitions and the water helps the paint kind of come together in ways where there's not really hard edges and it's kind of soft. And the reason you want to be able to do this is because it's hard to manipulate edges and gouache when the paint is already dry. You have to kind of resort to different sorts of techniques like scumbling and kind of re-wetting the paint. And the results are usually optimal. It's not as smooth as it could be. You can tell that you did these things to try and manipulate the edges. So it's really nice to have the ability to create soft edges in a way that you can anticipate where you will put the hard edges on top of. So I'm going to show you exactly what I mean when I show you how I painted this painting here. So let's get into the painting now. Starting with just the drawing on the paper. Just a really quick loose sketch just to give me a bit of an idea of where to go with my brushwork. But let us start first with the washes. So I'm just going to use some water to get it, get the paper starting to get a little soaked here. I guess there was a little bit of color already on my brush, but it doesn't really matter. So I'm using um, this Baohong watercolor paper. It's a rough texture and you definitely want something that's going to be able to withstand all the water we're going to be putting on this. So it's going to be soaking a bit and if we need to keep it wet, we also got this the spray mister. So we can go ahead and get this all damp and then so that gives us a way for the paint to just move around freely over our surface here. So first thing I'm going to do is just start it off with some, um, just kind of tone the paper a bit with some color here using some lavender Daniel Smith with a bit of white mixed into it. Oops, picked up some random yellow that was somewhere on my palette, but it doesn't really matter. So this is just getting us a little bit of color to put on top of our paper here. This is going to be very much like a watercolor wash if you guys are coming from watercolor. But even if you're coming from oils, we're just kind of toning the canvas, right? That's all we're really doing here. And we're, we put some water down so that it moves freely on our paper. So that's what we got going so far. And this is a point where we want to start working, moving a little quickly. And then we can grab a little bit more paint on top of it. So getting some, so that Daniel Smith Lavender, a little bit of uh, Holbein Gray number two. I'm a big fan of using neutrals, tube neutrals to modify my mixtures or even my other tube colors to make mixtures out of it. So being pretty loose and free with my colors here. So I'm sticking with the watercolor, uh, a synthetic squirrel mop that uh, Trakel makes. I like it for wet on wet because it can hold water 
and most of the time when it comes to using gouache you don't want a brush that holds too much water in it because it's going to dilute the gouache and make it not as opaque as you want but in order to counteract that amount of dilution we are using a lot of paint and so we're going to be building this up and uh, so up here we're going to keep it a little lighter so we got going on up here and then as we go further into our painting we're going to um, darken it up and so what's happening right there we had a little bit too much water and it's starting to to pull up so I'm going to go ahead and blot it a, just a tiny bit and we can always come back over it with more paint so that's what we'll do a little bit darker we need to go higher up in value to get closer to what we're after here so that's very purple we'll have to neutralize that a bit put some gray back into it Just letting the water dissolve the brushwork that we're putting down and it'll help it neutralize a bit. In terms of edges, I shouldn't say neutralize because that's not really what we're doing, but we're just letting the edges soften by way of the um, by way of the water just spreading around and taking our pigment around along with it so that's what we're doing here just building it up a little bit similar to watercolor and that we're building up our layers here but we'll come back over it with stronger and darker colors here so so I'm gonna make that distinction between light and dark here really important at this point gonna go very dark throwing some neutral gray spectrum violet maybe just a tiny bit of cadmium red You can see in this stage you really don't need to be that careful with what you're putting down. You can just slop it down and um, deal with refinement later. We're just establishing the values. Because we introduced so much purple and darkness into the painting, we had to do the same all over. We got to do the same all over. And that's what we'll do so we're layering thin to thick but we can also come back over here where we want to add more nuance into the light parts of the sky so we're taking a lot of white gouache maybe grabbing just a tiny bit of warm color into it yes let's put that in here we need a decent amount of paint on our brush as we do this It needs to be drier than it was before, but that's just going to naturally happen in the course of painting. So we'll just inside of these light parts, there's a little bit of color changes. So that's what we're introducing in here. And since it's still wet, it's gonna hopefully blend in seamlessly with what we already have going on here this is a rough paper too so we can um, take advantage of some of that texture happening in here 
So there's a little bit of uh, some neat interplay happening where we both got some of the blooming and kind of dissolving of the paint that happens with watercolor, but then we got some thickness on top of of all that similar to building up with oil so if you guys are new to gouache or at least haven't ever worked in gouache this way but are familiar with doing these sort of things in your respective um, media that you're used to using some of this might feel a little more um, akin to what you're used to doing so and then if your brush strokes are too Um, insistent as you put them down right now you can always just splash it with a little bit of water just kind of scrubbing back over it to get a little bit more um, get some more soft edges in there where it's starting to dry but it's still a little too um, a little too hard edge for what we're after so far so in order to keep that surface malleable in that way we'll have to spray it with water and this is why you need to work with a um, some quality paper like this is some nice thick 300 um, no I think this is even more than 300 GSM this is like the thickest type of watercolor paper you can get uh, commercially order so it's really taking a lot of of paper and and uh, maintaining its its um, it's really taking a lot of water and maintaining its integrity, which is super important when you're working with gouache in this way. Any uh, water media. So we're getting some neat little things where the water is just kind of making its way with the paint down the surface of the paint and making its way into the crevices of the paper. And it's making these neat little textures. So you can either choose to keep that or we can uh, wait till dries maybe slightly more and um, refine that a bit. But before we do that, we can come back over and start to build up the rest of our painting here. So there's a lot that still needs to be done. So we'll go ahead and, and do that. I'm going to wait to put those oranges in later because... It needs to be thicker and more opaque and the drier it is the the drier the paper is the easier it will be to do that so we'll wait a little bit longer to put those parts of the of the painting in also the thicker paint we start to put down the more the water will uh, will um, be absorbed into it so just be aware of that as you're going that the more you start to put the paint down the the more the water will dry and then we'll get some harder edges back into it and you may sometimes want that but we're not quite there yet so we're gonna keep misting it until we're done putting down our our establishment colors here so we're putting in some introducing some of these pinks and violets got going on in here it's okay just let the paint move around a bit for now 
we can always come back in with more deliberate brushwork and color and all that to make this come together and give definition to things that need it but you know you'll be surprised at how little definition these scenes will actually need just come back in over it and let it do its thing right now and then we can uh, add some of these colors into it so everything's all put down and I'm just letting it be sort of nebulous on purpose just uh, uh, let everything kind of do its thing let the colors interact on their own and see what happens out of them it's a relatively low-key but high contrast scene that we're working on here so gotta definitely keep establishing and re-establishing the the um the ratio of light to dark here and so we're doing just kind of as the water on the paper has not evaporated we can continue to just add little areas of darker values in here just build it up that way as the paint and water starts to dry then you can define things a little better and we're getting that shift in value that gouache has as the paint as the water dries and because we're soaking this paper we're going to get the most extreme examples of that shift happening so as we do that as the paint dries we can see that happening and anticipate where we're going to need to continue to, to add more color onto the paper more paint so that the ratio of water to paint continues to um, balance itself from one extreme to the other. So basically all I'm saying is as we go, the water to paint right now, it's still very much in favor of uh, water, higher water concentration to paint but the further and further along we go the more that's going to flip around right so the water's going to dry we're not going to keep adding a ton of extra water into our paint it's just gonna we're just going to use the water that's already there to um, help move our paint around and into the scene so it's just basically like we're giving it more and more focus as we go the more and more we go the more and more defined each brush stroke is gonna be so that's when we start to have to be a little bit more precise in what we're doing but that's okay. It's just kind of part of painting, right? To me, the fun part is always just establishing it. Then you get to that point where you're kind of moving things around, making sure that they're starting to come together in the way you want. And then that part of it it's tough and maybe because it's tough it might be a little less fun for some people but it's sort of that ugly and dirty stage that you get to in every painting where it's defined enough where you know what it's supposed to look like but it's not defined enough 
that it feels like it's it's already there so you have to guide the painting from where it starts to look like the vision you're after into it actually becomes what you're after so let that dry a bit because at this point we do need to start defining things just a bit more in the amount of water on our paper is still a way too much to be able to do that but we're just putting in those bits of darker paint as we go look how soft everything still is even when we put it down so it's a good sign that we're still able to lay things down and have them soften as we go sometimes you just do a little bit of mixing on the page so that's what i'm kind of doing there that streak of a lizard was a little too strong so we just came back over it with some ultramarine to knock it down a bit just defining our horizon there okay so we let it dry a little bit but i did at the end here give it a little mist just because we want things to be a little bit better defined, but we still also want them to maintain some amount of softness around the edges. So in order to do that, we got to keep our, our paper damp enough to do so. So that's what we're doing now. Still using this this little mop brush that holds a lot of water in it but we're changing our technique a little bit so that we're a little bit more precise and meticulous about our brushwork here Because we want to find some of these shapes a little better, but we need to still let it kind of dissipate around the edges. Okay. The nice thing about using neutral gray is it's very easy to actually change to a more saturated color because just about anything you add to it it's gonna look very saturated in comparison so putting in some of this little um, this turquoise green from Holbein into my gray and blue mixture to give a little bit of change in color temperature okay what happened there was that this paper is a little wavy so it actually caught the end of my brush stroke there in a way i didn't want to but that's okay it's still wet so see how we can still lift out that color there the only reason we're able to do that is because it's water or this uh, paper is still wet makes it way more difficult if not okay we're gonna need to go darker in value because the way it's drying now it's lightening up it's that thing that gouache does <laughs> So if you're kind of new to gouache, 
but you're coming to it from watercolor I highly recommend you try this because because we're going so wet you're going to slow down the process of that shift so it's going to make you understand that shift in value that gouache is so infamous for and it doesn't have to be that intimidating you develop definitely uh, an extra sense of how that shift occurs the amount of shift that's gonna be just from from practicing with it but being so taking so long for it to dry you can see that happening in a much more slowed down rate so you can totally see how that's happening and then you can adjust it as you go there's no surprise necessary so it needs to go way darker down here so we're gonna come back into it with some Payne's gray we add back in some alizarin so it's not so cold there we go happening over here too I think we need to cool that a bit I go so highly alizarin use some violet instead still very wet over here so as we put down our brush marks they should soften up a bit here so we like that it's a little darker and slightly warmer in these areas that are near the where the Sun is kind of peeking out so we'll start that with the base of of warmer tones that we can come back over it with cool colors we're gonna be layering a bit that's what we're doing there don't worry at this point about pulling up our layers underneath because we're just going to come back over it anyway we just want the color and the edges to be how we want them because we're going to keep working on the layers as they dry if it gets too dark in areas just add a little bit of that neutral gray to it so we're still at this point just trying to establish the maximum dark values that we need in our painting because once it's all dried up we just come back over it and put the light colors over this it's going to be way easier to do that when the dark parts are already defined they're already kind of locked in once it's dried and then we can come back over it with drier and thicker paint and then we can I recommend that you take it one sort of color type at a time like I've been mostly sticking with the blues red or blues I've been mostly sticking with the blues and the purple black gray because I just don't want to have to uh, keep changing the colors on my brush all the time the more you do that the more likely you're going to introduce the wrong colors and color temperatures into areas that you're working on like if I were suddenly needed to go switch back over to my 
blues and purples instead of just taking care of it all in the same at the same time where the paper's still in doing its thing where it's drying out then you're just going to get a lot of colors mixing with each other that you don't necessarily want to be mixing with each other so this is why we waited for so long to start putting our oranges and reds in here. See how that's starting to come together? So what we're doing right now is still looking through all the details, the harder edges like in the clouds and stuff, and just seeing past all the the surface details and looking at what's happening underneath all that, all those different um, colors and soft edges, like lost and found edges that happen underneath all the texture. We're just doing our best to define, or not even define all that, but just put it down so that when we put the details on top of it, we don't have to worry about trying to create soft edges when the paper's dry and you're dealing with with the nature of the paint being completely different than when it was still very wet. It's just really hard to make soft edges when the paper is dry and you're dealing with thicker paint. There are ways of doing it, but it's just not going to be the same sort of really smooth ethereal transitions. You're going to have to do things like dry brushing and scumbling to give the appearance of like broken edges, but it's not going to be these soft sort of uh, transitions that kind of just happen almost not even deliberately. I mean, obviously they're deliberate because we've made the paint behave the way we want it to as best as we could. But when you have to really go in here and define everything with really deliberate brushstrokes, it's just not the same. It's just take way longer to do it that way too. If time is an issue for you. And it probably should be because even if you're not a professional working on a on a, a time budget, you don't want to spend longer than you need to on a painting because you want to get to more paintings. Right? <laughs> Okay, at this point we can just kind of work on spots of it so we don't have to soak the entire page every time. We can just kind of hit it certain spots that we want to work on. And then we can go back into it with uh, one of our softer brushes. This is a Trakel uh, Synthetic Sable. So we'll go in here and uh, mix fresh Put a little paint here, see how this works for us. Letting it not only interact with the water, but the paint that we already had. We spritzed our um, paper here, so it's actually picking up a little bit of the paint that we had underneath. So I'm hoping that it just kind of melts into what we already got going. The paper is still a little damp, so what we can do is just introduce water back into it with a brush and just kind of spot handle the um, areas that need to be re-wetted so that the paint dissipates in very strategically placed areas here so 
in order to do this effectively though there needs to be a decent amount of of paint already on the page because if not then you're going to lift up too much of the paint and it's going to end up looking uh, like you kind of pulled the paint off which I mean you literally do but if there's enough paint you won't pull enough of the underlying layer for it to make a big difference so that's pretty good it's doing what we want it to do so there's still a certain amount of detail we're trying to get over here but we still want to be a little diffused so we're gonna just hit a little bit of water and then work on what we got going on over here it's starting to define itself I'm not going to worry too much about being really exact with these shapes here. It doesn't really matter. We're doing a lot of wet on wet and just letting the, the paint take on its own characteristics. So it'll just let things happen naturally within it, within all of what's going on here. These clouds won't be completely well defined until I put the highlights on them but we can do what we can by using our just understanding of a form to make more defined shapes to these clouds without being too without the brushwork being too deliberate unless you want the brushwork to be more deliberate. I personally don't. I want there to be this soft diffusion happening in the paint. Partly for demonstration purposes, but also because we want to expand the the perception of gouache as a medium, the things that you can do with it. At least that's what I want to do here. The more you know what you're capable of doing within a medium, the more tools for creation you have at your disposal. Whatever medium you're choosing to work with, you want to have the range of capabilities that suit your vision. And to me, gouache is uh, very akin to oil, and especially when you learn how to work with the paint in this way, it expands what you know you can do with it, and so it pushes you further out to explore your creativity with it. Don't be afraid with gouache to let it go a little bit darker than you're comfortable with because the way it changes as it dries, it's probably going to fall more into what you were hoping it to be anyway. To get the uh, paint to where I want it to be, I kind of overshoot the mark uh, so to speak because what it actually needs to look like isn't going to be always what you put down first but you already know that probably if you're watching this video and understand gouache enough to to um, know that you might need some help getting some soft edges and all that when you paint with it. It's getting to the point where it's fairly dry in spots so we can come in and define those parts of it that still need definition. Okay that part was a bit of a mistake. I didn't let it dry enough before trying to work back into it and that's a uh, definitely something that um, 
in gouache especially, you need to be very cognizant of. It's very easy to um, overwork gouache in that way because you're not patient enough to let the paint dry before you start to work back into it. And you run into all sorts of problems when you do that. So try to let it dry. <laughs> it needs to go darker over on this side. So we'll start with so working on stuff that's dark, yet a little bit better defined. So at this point, as things start to dry, you can see what parts need to be defined more, what parts still need um, a little bit of, of wet on wet to work on. So we'll spray some areas over here. Not too worried about things bleeding into each other yet because there's no real, there's nothing set in stone on this painting quite yet. So things can work into each other as much as they need to. Things can work into each other as much as they need to. So at this point, I think I'm okay with letting things uh, lock in, so to speak because I think I'm pretty okay with the way things are going here. Maybe there's a little bit of changes need to be made up here. So we'll come back into it with some freshly wetted paper. And then let's put some darker paint up here into it. You could use a little bit more up here. A little bit of working what's going on. Okay, that's too dry. So see what happens when we're not working on wet enough paper. You get these areas that are too defined in a way we don't need them to be. So we come back over it, laying the paint kind of move around a bit. Like we were doing in the beginning, letting things bloom out, kind of make their way around things. If we're getting that to happen, then we can use gravity to make sure it doesn't completely obliterate what was going on here. Take our brush, make it a little drier, and then kind of make sure soaking kind of doesn't drop into everything we're doing here so could even do is turn it around let the water do its thing that way then as it's drying reintroduce some colors we want in here to find those a little better there are very few parts of this painting that need well-defined edges so Working upside down like this also lets us see things in a different way. And lets me define parts that were hard to see when it was right side up. So this is what we're coming into now. It's still wet, so there's a lot of color interaction happening in the reference here that's going to be... better defined in our painting here as we go. So I'm going to start dropping in some of these areas with the rim light kind of happening. So we're going to make it somewhat dark so that it doesn't stand out too much yet. So that's working out. It's a little lighter up here. Still kind of wet, letting it dissipate. 
as those dry, they'll probably lock in a bit. And if we need to, so let them do their own thing over here. We can also kind of feather out and let them kind of melt into the rest of what's around it so that only the part at the top is well defined. So put back in some of these darker areas. Make sure that's looking okay. While it's still wet, I could come back in here with thick paint. Let it let all this kind of do its thing here and dry brush them in and um, maybe hit it with spray there move it around make sure it falls back into it kind of let some of this texture go away and just see how it ends up looking once it's dried up there uh, I think I could probably use a little bit. Nothing crazy about that shape there. All right, nice and soft. So once this is all dry, I'll come back into it and finish it up. But this is all the wet on wet that I feel like I need to do for this painting. And then all that needs to be done to it is come back in, refine the details, and yeah, make it look like a finished painting. <laughs> so I think that people wouldn't necessarily look at that, look at this painting from a distance and think it's, oh, that's such a, obviously a gouache painting. <laughs> I mean, not that there's anything wrong with that, but, um, you know, the thing about gouache is that it gets a kind of a reputation for having a certain look. And I feel like wet on wet gives you an opportunity to explore different ways of handling the medium that go outside what the conventional boundaries of the medium are. So yeah, just as long as you have a good paper, you can really do a lot with the paint and just kind of let it do its thing. And you can create a lot of, of new and interesting looks to your painting. If you've been a gouache artist, for a while or maybe you're coming into it from a different medium there's a lot this this medium has to offer so i hope this lesson was inspiring and i look forward to seeing what you guys create with um, this technique if you do decide to do something inspired by me tag me in your social media and um, i'll do my best to to share it so, all right, thanks. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, go ahead and give it a like or a comment. Um, if you wanna see the entire painting done without any cuts, and if you wanna see how it goes from how I established it in this video to a more complete painting, go ahead and go to my Gumroad page and you'll have a full download that you can save to your computer, watch anytime, and it'll come with not only a high-res version of this painting that you could zoom in and look at all the detail, and you can get a photo of the reference and a transcript of all the captions that I made, so you can refer to that as well. Also, if you're a gouache artist who's passionate about painting but you're stuck on your artistic journey, I'd love to hear about your challenges and experiences. So I'm on a mission to create a program that empowers artists to achieve mastery in gouache, fostering creativity and self-expression. But first, I need your input. If you're an emerging gouache artist or know someone who is, I'd be grateful for your time and perspective. I'm conducting interviews to better understand the struggles and aspirations of artists like you. So in exchange for your valuable insights, I'm more than happy to share my expertise and answer any more questions you might have about overcoming artistic plateaus. So let's build a supportive community where we can all thrive in our artistic pursuits.
drop a comment below and maybe drop a way to get in contact with you maybe via social media or something like that and I'll get in touch with you personally and I'll reach out to you personally. So together, let's unlock the secrets to gouache mastery and I'll see you soon.